Seiko have just released a watch you're definitely going to want to see. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Very special today because I get to show you a brand new Seiko that is crazy good. Now, the new set of solar chronographs Seiko have released are a lot similar to the late 90s, early 2000s, kinetic chronographs back in the days, you know, quite dated of its time, designs expressing the sense of speed. These were quite unique at the time because each hand had their own dial independently from each other and it gave the watch a kind of cockpit look. These old watches were also powered by the Seiko kinetic technology. The movement was quartz based, but instead of a battery, had a free flowing rotor that wound and gave power to the quartz crystal. If you only had one watch, this worked really well, but if you had several watches and didn't wear it for a while, the capacitors in these movements went kaputski. Seiko have brought out these watches as a solar quartz movement with five independent motors. There are four of these to collect, including a couple of limited editions that celebrate the fact that Seiko are the official timekeeper of the Budapest World Athletics Championships. Now, I have to say a big thank you to Seiko because they've actually sent this watch in to me. I asked for the white variant. I think this is probably the best looking one. It also reminds me of the old chronographs, the 6138s, but this new movement of Seiko's has a subdial hand moving at a hundredth of a second. And for anyone that likes a chronograph or a stopwatch complication, this is the ultimate watch for you. Are you Seiko stopwatch ready? Oh, and also find out what my wife thinks of this watch at the end of the show. <laughs> Let's go. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing the SFJ001. And what an unusual but Seiko looking watch. This is how I remember Seiko when I was growing up in the 90s. Very unusual looking watches, pushing boundaries like no other brand. Everything about this watch means business, apart from the very small bezel of this watch. All the stainless steel is pretty much brushed to really let the dial do the talking. They call this this colour variant, the panda version. Any panda you know with three eyes? But holding this, turning this around in the light, this watch is very well made and very well finished. For someone that loves symmetry in their watch designs, this thing looks pretty good, doesn't it? To me, it really does look like a science watch, you know what I mean? I need a lab coat and a pair of very tiny, small rimmed glasses. And I gotta say, first impressions, this is pretty cool. Quick spec check. So we got a 42 millimeter diameter case. 12.9 thick, 48 lug to lug, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Really good contemporary sizes, and even if it looks a bit big on my wrist, I still think the watch is at the correct size to house all those independent dials. We've got a curved sapphire glass protecting that dial. The crown at four o'clock is not screw in, but we do have a screw in case back, and that gives us 100 meters of water resistance. And considering we have these big piston pushers, I think that's excellent. Now we're spending over over 800 pounds here, so we should definitely see an upgrade in the bracelet. It's still held together with pin and collars, but we have solid end links, solid links, push button deploying, and we have a milled clasp. Yes, we only have two micro adjusts, but Seiko always seem to make a watch fit any wrist. Right, let's look at the face. Dial time. And this thing is truly beautiful. First off, the dial color is this brushed silver texture. We have a two-step sloping chapter ring telling us what each pusher and crown does. And each dial on this dial does have its own character. They're initially raised off the dial, but then sunken in with this amazing radial pattern. And I just think this is absolutely stunning. It really does remind me of the 6138s, the old vintage chronographs, but done so much better. This is a watch that has certainly not just been slapped together, and you can't call this a cash grab, people. This is beautifully designed with exclusively well-machined parts just for this watch. As you can see in the actual time dial at the bottom, just below the hand stack, we have that Prospects logo. This means this is a professional tool. It's been tested in all sorts of ways to make it ultra reliable for someone using it that is at an elite level, you know? Just right for me. <laughs> so we've got Loom on the... Actually, I don't know where the Loom is, actually. It's got to be on some of the dials. This is Seiko after all. I um, should have done my... 
uh, research on where the loom is, but um, let's see out of 10 how bright this is. Okay, so, you know, it's there, but it's not bright at all, is it? Let's be honest, what are you doing in the dark that requires a stopwatch? Steady. <laughs> now, it's powered by an 8A50 solar chronograph movement. With a full charge, this is going to last you six months. That means you'll never need to change a battery. And there are two modes. Now, let me show you what this watch can do, all right? Pressing the bottom left pusher. Look at that. Oh, we got to see that again. Back to the time. Push it again. Oh, isn't that cool? Bear with me, I might just do that a few more times. So when we are in the chronograph mode, it's the top pusher that starts this off. And look at this! Isn't it amazing? So the left subdial is the one tenth of a second. Top dial is the second. And then the right dial is the one hundredth of a second. Also, you notice that the time dial, the hands have gone to 12 o'clock. The hour hand slips underneath the minute hand. And that now becomes as one hand. That is your minute dial. When we reach a full minute, the two quick dials either side will stop while the two in the middle keep going. We also have a split time. I mean, how cool is that. Come on, you gotta like that. Truly impressed with the way this movement works. When we're in the time mode, pull out the bottom right crown. And this works a lot like my Seiko Arnie. When you rotate the crown slowly, you can feel clicks and that will move the minute hand. If you move it three clicks in a row, that minute hand will move across the dial a bit quicker. And if you keep twisting it quickly, it just goes round and round the dial so we can adjust for our perfect time. The only thing I would say when we are in the time mode it would have been nice to have that top dial run in the seconds the other thing to point out is when you are in the stopwatch mode you can't tell the time anymore but if you are in that stopwatch mode and you've left it for like two or three minutes the watch will revert back to the time all in all though sensational hello on my six and a half inch wrist, and this looks cool. This watch is a conversation starter, isn't it? You don't want it small. I think it's just at the right size. This can be worn at work, under a cuff. For me, as a tennis coach on court, I can wear this. There's enough brushing and polishing around the bezel to make this watch a dress watch. A few people may be put off by, well, not only the way the dial looks, but the amount of pushes there are. But trust me, they do not dig into the wrist. They're the kind of pushers that you just want to push all the time. There is a little bit of inner AR coating on the inside of that sapphire. But where this dial is so monochrome in its design, and even though the dials are so small, it's very easy to read. What a stunner. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. So there we go. The SFJ001. First of all, I didn't think I'd like this watch. I'm a simpleton. No, better word, a traditionalist. Someone who just likes one dial on their watch. But for some reason, I love it. The whole design of it, the thought process that's gone into this watch. I love being hands-on with my watches and you can't get more pushable pushers than the ones on this watch. When you engage that stopwatch, it's an absolute thing of beauty and it's a watch that does something hardly any other watch can do. And for anyone that wants to jazz up their watch collection while still maintaining a vintage, retro, traditional look, this could be it. Like I said, I wish there was a running seconds hand on the time mode. Just gives me an indication that the watch is actually alive. As this is a quartz movement, you don't get the clicks on the chronograph like you would a mechanical. The buttons are spongy. It would be nice if Seiko could make almost like a, a fake click as you engage the chronograph. <laughs> Now, I've just checked on some of the websites, Francis and Gay. This watch is going for £760, £100 less than I initially thought. And I've got to be honest, I think it's a pretty damn good deal. It feels like a step up from a mid-level Seiko. It handles like something special. I love the fact it represents Seiko of the 90s, being reimagined in the nowsies. And like I said, for anyone that loves a chronograph or a stopwatch function, whether it be in a digital or mechanical, watch. And this four-eyed monster of a chronograph gets the MWC seal of approval. Here is my wife's first impressions of the SFJ001. <laughs> 
Whoa, this is weird. Reminds me of a paw. I don't know why, but I do kind of like it. It's not boring. Good. Seal of approval from the wife, Seiko. Wow, what a show. <laughs> I'm just boxing this up, ready for Seiko to have. I've got to send it back. And while I do package this up, why don't you check this show out? Oh, this one's superb. You'll love it. One of my favourite shows. Go on, click it. Click it. Click it!